Big Daddy's 8600. They got college now. And, um, you know, we used to go out there. You know, I'm talking on a school night. I, I think it was a Wednesday, Tuesday or Wednesday. Could have been a Thursday. We know it was in the middle of the week, and we know we still had to go to school the next day. But we was hanging out, you know what I'm saying? Or take their parents' car, you know what I'm saying? Whatever, but we got there. And uh, they used to have this gong show every time. It was $500 or 250 or maybe 300 500 So, you know, they probably put up $1,000 a night, you know what I'm saying? They were making their money anyway. But uh, that was our money. You know, first time we did it, boom, we came in first, you know? Boom. No, we came in second. We went back. The next week, we got that shit. We became down there local celebrities or fixtures in Big Daddy's 8600. That's where we started. It was either us or that nigga Ruben. <laughs> or another nigga, I think named Stefan or something. These niggas used to be singing how the hoes. But, you know, we came up in there with that. Then, uh, what y'all would call thug shit, thug life. You know, we was that, yeah. The culture, the culture to be in. Like one day, Mr. Mix happened to be in there, and uh, he saw us. Yep, they were uh, Mr. Mix, producer of Two Live Crew, and everything on these records at the time. I just want to make sure I give him his credit for that. And he produced everything, the whole sound. Anyway, Mr. Mix was in there, and um, after we got up, I'm talking about he came straight to us, like, hey, boy, what's up? Y'all want to make a record? I'm saying just like that. Y'all want to make a record? And I'm like, hell yeah, what's up? See, I already knew who he was. Because, you know, again, I'm a Miami nigga. I know everything in Miami. I, I, I know two live crew. Deb ain't really know who he was at the time. You know, I let him know what's up. Him and Deb exchanged numbers. You know, they, they became, like, best buddies and shit. You know, he'll send Deb to shit. I mean, he sent us 12 beats. We did all 12 beats. 11 of them made the album. Like a month later, Hoss would say 40 days. I figure a month. About 40 days, we had the whole project finished. Two of like mothers. So, you know, we'd be on the phone at night three ways. Boom. Yeah, this record here. And you'd be spit your verse, Dale. Dale spit a verse. I spit my verse. Hoss would be on the other line like, yeah, well, what that line? What you said on that line? Man, you said, and you know, we can't forget drugs. Like, when we was doing our rhymes, drugs was like our critic. Joe was the one that heard all this. We're like, man, mm, you all right. You know what I'm saying? And you can't get mad. You can't get in your feelings, you know? You just got to go ahead and shut his mouth. You got to write some shit with a nigga. like, okay, okay, nigga. And, and that was our formula. It wasn't rap, 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 rap. And then punch line. ta -ta. When me and Dale started doing, we said every line. We got to go out. If you listen to Two Little Like Mother, and then everything else that came before the plan, to see our formula. It, it's all right, though. And if you listen to anybody else during that time or before that time, it was there. A lot of people got game from that PC connection. You know, they'll never admit it or one day they will. But the good thing was we was baby too loud. So we come in from too loud. So we just ain't had no orders. We had, excuse me, we had lyrics. Showmanship, you know what I'm saying? And that was our thing. That was our thing. You know, we, we just set the stage for them. For all you niggas who thought they was hip hoppers and thought that shit didn't live in the South, but niggas from Miami couldn't rap. We did that. Okay, boom, fast forward. We had done started working on the. Uh, the second part of the Clan album. I'm not sure if it was gonna be Lonely or the Clan. Or something like that, you know. See we did In My Nature. You know, that was gonna be the first single on the next project. But uh one day, Butterball and Big Nate, they took us to Tallahassee, you know, they promote shows. Shout out to them boy. They'll say, man, I ain't going back. Now, you know, that's my dog. So he hadn't been talking to me about none of this shit. How he was feeling or nothing. It was just that day. Because, you know, I was getting out of money beside route. You know, rap was fun. Shows was fun. 
you know. But you know, I I had a whole nother thing going. I don't know who there was talking to or what he was talking about. What you mean? What? He was like, nah, man, I, you know, nah, man, nah, man. <laughs> that was my name, nah, man. I, man, you know, dude is funny, man. It's just shit. So, with that being said. That was it, you know, we went down there. Uh, we got our tapes back, we got our mic, cause you know, again, that's my nigga, I'm from a nigga. I don't know the plan. You know, I'm rocking with my dog anyway. Like, well, you, you got this rap shit. You know, I'm, I'm rocking with you. But the whole time, I guess he wanted to do his own thing anyway. I really felt like he should have said, yeah, Jay, nigga, it's time. You know, but it, none of that really matter, cause we, we so, Tight. Him and brother, they went to Detroit, did a uh, home team, you know, with John Sally now. You know, this some shit I don't know nothing about. I don't know this until they come back with it, right? I don't even know they gone. You know, Hop, which was our manager at the time, Michael Hopkins, you know, he was in touch with me. You know, the whole time we was out on the road, Hop was the manager of PC, you know, that was my guy. So he always was talking to me, you know, like, boom. Cause remember, prior I said we went down there, we took our tapes back. Nigga put magnums over and everything. Two inch real, you put a magnet over the tape, it destroyed. You can't even use that shit. So those of y'all who say y'all heard that album before Porter's Mentality, if you got a tape or cassette of it, you got some gold. Cause nobody else got that shit. I had it, but I ain't got it now. Oh, yeah. You know, Hop was like, man, cuz, you know what I'm saying? Da 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 And, you know, me at the time, everybody was, you know, the, the, the streets in the world, they were kind of hating on Luke. You know what I'm saying? You know, the whole thing about Too Loud leaving, breaking up, MC Shandy left, you know, with the lawsuits and whoever else was there that wasn't, you know, it was claiming they weren't getting paid, they weren't getting no money. But, uh, my whole thing was, boy, I hate to see another nigga get, you know, done. I told her, I said, tell a nigga, i do it. He got to pay me this amount and tell a nigga to take care of me. Mind you, I don't know the game. I still don't know the game. I just know I was getting some money thousands at a time and I wasn't risking my freedom. You know, every time I got a thousand dollars, you know, I did some shit to get it. True story. With that, he agreed. I connected with Mike first because Mike first was starting to work with Luke. You know, they came down, him and Tunk and I forgot the cool Kylie. You know, they were ODS. <laughs> Original Dick Slangers. That's what they call they so ODS production. I was like, boom. So, you know, I would get with Mike every goddamn day. You know, go to his hotel, he had drum machine set up, and I spit these lyrics. You know what I'm saying? And then some of the stuff, again, we already had. So Mike heard some of that stuff, like, you take the, uh, the lyrics from the Raggedy Hoes, you know, action? I don't know. I Hate Hoes, you know. You know, these songs we did, like, I Hate Hoes would have been me and Dale. But that was one of my sayings. That's why I was able to, that's my thing. But, you know, I hated them all the they just want to run my shit, bitch. Yeah. Yeah. I hate <laughs> that was me back then, but it was really, I wasn't shit. You know what I'm saying? And I would be like, nigga, fuck you. I'm like, fuck you back, bitch. <laughs> yeah, another story. But, uh, yeah, with, you know, that's what turned out to be poison mentality. You know? And, uh, you know, I had this record, and Luke was like, Damn, nigga. Make, make a record about some good girl. I, was, I told a nigga, I ain't know nothing at the time. This is, you know, he's talking about a nigga 19 years old. After coming off the road with two live crew. You got a picture of my mentality. My mentality was poisonous. Poisonous mentality. Hence the name. But then, one day, Devastator was down there. And he was trying to sell his beats. You know, he was, you know... I was say, yeah, nigga, yeah, man, what's up, boy? I got something for you. 
you know what I mean? I'm just like, nigga, get money. I was willing to work with anybody because I think I could put this fire on any beat. Like, and this was my thought a long time until just recently. I'm like, oh, shit, it's just a beat till I put some J on it. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I hit a beat, but I hit a beat. You know what I'm saying? That's what I do with it. That make it a song or a hit, you know? That's how I felt. Nigga gave me three beats or two beats. Nigga gave me two beats. I picked one. He said, oh, no, no, that uh, Luke, that's for Luke. We're going to do that. And I'm like, well, nigga, why you gave me the beat then? Nigga, I don't, you know, now I could have just walked away. I'm like, all right, well, fuck it then. I'll just do the other one. You know, and it's me letting you, because I know what you want. You want to go in there and bother Luke and get a check from Luke saying, yeah, I to produce this record. But I think that was divine intervention. That was God saying, nah, nigga, I want this beat to go like this. I want this record to go like that. Because I swear, I wrote it to that beat. Then we did it. And when I told the nigga the last line, yeah, say whatever. I'm like, yeah, I got a hook. He's like, uh-uh, hold up. I'm going to do the hook. I'm going out. And that nigga just went in there and did the call and response. Because I wasn't going to do the regular loop call and response. Say, 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 say. I wasn't going to do it. I was going to do something. You know, I'm just gonna do my thing. I say, yeah, I'm, 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 you know what I'm saying? But uh, I'm just like, whatever. You know, it's just booty shake time for me. Trying to find out. When Luke heard that motherfucker run up, he was like, that's it. Same thing happened with um, Kevin on what? When they heard who that, they was like, that's it, man. You, you done. It always go that way. They hear that one record. They be one record driven, you know. That's proof that them labels, they just want them singles. Anyway, but I guess you need that to drive the album. Poison.